Hi there and welcome to Capital View. The monsoon session of parliament has begun with familiar scenes of adjournments and no work getting done. Is this session going to be a complete washout? Joining me on that question, Gaurav Gogoi of the Congress Party, Nalin Kohli of the BJP and Jay Panda of the Biju Janta Dal. Thanks everyone very much indeed for being here. Mr. Gaurav Gogoi, it seems as if the Congress has decided that unless these three ministers resign, unless Sushma Swaraj, Vasundara Raje and now Shivraj Singh Chauhan, unless these two chief ministers and Sushma Swaraj resign or at least one resigns, you're not going to let any work happen. Isn't this a maximalist position that you've taken? Sagarika, this, it's a very clear demand of the public that those who are guilty of massive corruption, whether responsible for the death of 49 lives in Madhya Pradesh or contaminated chikki in Maharashtra or aiding and abetting a person who is on the lookout by the Enforcement Directorate. Now, there are clear evidences which link ministers and chief ministers to these crimes. There's a clear evidence. There's a CBI probe. There are letters which are being made public. And I think it's a fair demand for the entire nation that the government, the ruling government, should take concrete action. Now, the prime minister came to this election with a massive mandate against corruption. But since then, we've been hearing only empty rhetoric of na khaunga, na khane dunga. We are looking for action. Can these resignations be made a precondition for any kind of work in parliament? That's really the issue. But let me come to the BJP on this. Mr. Nalan Kohli, the Congress may be raising the stakes, but didn't you do exactly the same thing to the Congress, to the UPA, when you were in the opposition? Let's go one by one. The Congress is not interested in discussion. They are interested in disruption. Fair enough, that's what they feel would serve parliamentary democracy better. They are entitled to have a view on it. With regard to it now, it's funny. First, you want a discussion when the government, Mr. Jaitley, others all are on record, saying that, yes, let's have a discussion. We can have a statement, we can have a discussion, and no problem about it. Then the Congress says, let's have a debate, whether we should have a debate or not. So therefore, they don't probably want to discuss because the minute you will discuss it, the facts will come out and their already weakened case would probably completely disappear. Take the case of uh, uh, Rajasthan. They had a press conference by no less than Mr. Jairam Ramesh. He forgot or decided not to present the actual document that made all the difference, the 1958 document, which showed that the Dholpur Palace belonged to no, the family. No, but answer my question. The Dholpur family but, 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 and but, not but. the government. So number one, I'm coming, I'm coming. Number two, when you say that the BJP raised this position about confrontationist or obstructionism, let's go back to the facts at that time. Were they not scams? Were they not arrests? Were they not people in jail? Were they not issues that where FIRs had been done? Is there a similar situation here? No. You want to discuss states issues? Certainly. We are happy to discuss what has happened in Goa during the Gambar Kamas thing, a one million dollar okay, bribe. These are state we are happy issues. to discuss Kerala. These are state we are happy issues. to discuss exactly. There are no formal charges. It's not allowed there as no per FIR, PCR. There no, is no charge the sheet. What the is the Congress doing? It can't compare to what the Congress was doing. Yeah. My last point. My last point. So therefore, you've got it. State issues don't come up as precedent in the parliament. But if you want to, we are open to that also. And certainly, we'll expand it to all states, not selective as the Congress would wish. Last, on Madhya Pradesh, there is a CBI inquiry. The government itself said, hand it over. That's been the Congress demand. It started. So you decide everybody is guilty before even the inquiry has really picked up speed. And now that the Supreme Court is there, the Congress wants to see itself above it. Jay Panda, you know, this tit-for-tat politics that we're seeing, you did this to us, therefore we will do this to you. Is this therefore going to mean that parliamentary functioning becomes a casualty? Well, yes, unfortunately, it uh, seems like parliament is, uh, is doomed to be disrupted in the current ambiance. I would like to say the following. I think it's unfortunate that the two largest parties, uh, one in government and one in opposition, keep switching their positions. When they're in opposition, they disrupt. When they're in government, they want parliament to function. Actually, uh, I, I wish that it would be more issue-based. Now, we for one, the BJD, we don't believe in disrupting parliament, but we do think that some of these allegations that have risen are very serious matters. And the way to deal with such serious allegations is to raise these issues in parliament, have a thorough discussion, put the government on the mat uh, if, the, if the facts justify right. that. Uh, I understand. Uh, the I understand. Sushma ji wants to make a statement clarifying her position in the issues in which she has been uh, named, and I think it is important that uh, we should hear what she has to say without disrupting. That's and a very then good point. Ask Let hard, me put that point to Gaurav Gogoi. 
Let me put that point to Gaurav Gogoi. Gaurav Gogoi, why won't you let Sushma Swaraj speak? She wants to give her point of view. Let her speak. Sagarika, the, the, in this current government, the entire power has been centralized in the Prime Minister's office. And the Prime Minister himself said that he would punish those who are accused of corruption and he would not allow corruption to take root in this country. He will be the chokidar of corruption. Now, as opposition, we are simply asking for the Prime Minister to take action of those who are accused of corruption. Whether it's in the case no, of No, but why Swarat, not let, where's the case why of not let Rajay, the external affairs or minister the case of Shifrat Singh Chauhan? at least present her case in the house? Why not let the minister at least tell you and make a presentation of what she actually did and give her give the facts? First of all, the, the current government needs to remove those who are tainted of helping those who are aiding and abetting. Okay, first, the government People has to remove. People on the lookout. So first, first the, the government, government has to, to take an action. Let me just get Nalin Kohli in here. And we have a discussion. We can have a debate on legislative business. Please do not tag the Congress as obstructionist. In the last looks, in the last session, we had one of the most productive Lok Sabha sessions in the history. We had close to 242 hours of sitting. Now, surely that would not have happened had the Congress not been a productive opposition. But as so Mr. Nalin Kohli is pointing out, Gaurav, as Mr. Nalin Kohli is pointing out, as Mr. Nalin Kohli is pointing out, there are no formal charges against any of these three ministers or two chief ministers and minister and these are state issues. Vyapam and uh, Mr. Vasundra Raja are state issues and there are no formal charges against Sushma Swaraj. How do I you think, respond to I that? Think, I, I think for Mr. Nalan Kohli, it is a completely different matter when the BJP is opposition. Then the parliament has seen that there were disruptions over Adarsh housing, which was again a state issue but in Maharashtra. And there were disruptions, continuous disruptions over many demands. Now, when they are in government, they feel that disruptions is not as per parliamentary democracy. So you cannot have how one can the rules rule be different? in opposition. Mr. Nalin Kohli, how can the, the rules ruling? be different now? When you were in opposition, Mr. Arun Jaitley was on record saying disrupting parliament is legitimate parliamentary tactic. How can the rules be different now? In rare circumstances, no, they are not. As a matter of fact, let me first begin by acknowledging, yes, I will not even say that it's a monsoon session is a washout. Parliament has collectively, and that includes the Congress, every other party, transacted legislative business. And it's been good also in that sense. There is a issue at the moment. Let's see how it sorts itself out. But let's now get to the political rhetoric. There is a no comparison. I mean, I can point you out Suresh Kalmadi. That happened. What did the Congress do? I can point you out 2G, where the courts turned it down. Colgate, where the courts, where uh, finally the courts have turned it down. So a lot of things have happened. In our, so therefore, let's talk on substance. Now, if you want to bring stage, we are not running away from any discussion. We are happy to. But why not discuss then Goa? I'm sure Mr. Gogoi wouldn't mind even if issues related to Assam or the other states are brought up. My last point. That as far as the Congress party is saying that they are in their rights to believe what is good for their party and how they would like to go. But I would not like it to be extended to the people of India. Because as far as their leadership is there, they are busy at the moment, you know, looking at an inchy tape and trying to measure okay, chess let sizes. Me, let me just Whereas actually public has been moving away okay, let from me, them. Let me put so that if point, they want to put a point of view, let them do it in parliament. Let them do it Why in parliament. Why are they speaking on behalf put, of the people of India? Let people point. speak for themselves or let parliament collectively do it. Let me just put Jay Panda's point to you, Mr. Gaurav Gogoi. The fact is, it's one thing to want a discussion on uh, Lalit Modi. It's one thing to want a discussion on the Vyapam scam. But why make resignations a precondition for the discussion? That unless they resign, unless all three resign, or at least one resigns, there can be no even discussion. Why this precondition? Very clear and simple, Sagarika. What has happened in Madhya Pradesh in, in the Vyapam scam? 49 people, innocent people have been murdered, have died. And all this while the chief minister is running the government. In fact, he spotted the corruption himself, as he, so he claims, in 2009. But from 2009 to 2015, there are still people dying. There's a governor who is involved. The Congress has asked the governor to okay, be Okay, so the crimes resigned, are so high, that is not the happened. number of at deaths, the same time, I'm sorry, because there have the been so many time, deaths, the chief minister has to resign. But on the other hand, Mr. Nalin Kohli is saying the charges are not serious enough. Let me just bring in uh, Mr. BJ Panda. No, I didn't say that. On it, hold on. That's a miscar. No, 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 please. B I didn't B say they are not serious enough. You, you said know, it's a state BJP issue. BJP's I never said that. I said the matter is under investigation. 
as if the per, matter as is per, under investigation, per now it's with the CBI. As per the I, you can't Mr. Venka you, and I, I mean, law, clearly law, said law, nothing I illegal just Gaurav ji, or Gaurav nothing ji, immoral has been done. Okay, the, the so the, the matter is still subdued, his matter is under investigation, ministers. unless the formal charges are made, you can't ask for resignations. Let me just get in Jay Panda. Jay Panda, you know, there is the non-Congress opposition united in this demand that everyone has to resign before any kind of discussion can take place. Or is this just a Congress strategy to put pressure on the government? Is What about the non-Congress opposition? Are they united in that the resignations have to happen before any kind of discussion? Look, uh, very clearly we are in the opposition and you have correctly pointed out we are not aligned with the Congress. But these are very serious allegations. These allegations against central ministers and chief ministers are very serious allegations. So, so where do you stand? But uh, setting preconditions but, but setting preconditions may not be the right way to do it. It's also not uh, logical or commonsensical. You know, even in the court of law, even if you have an accusation of murder or rape or something like that, you don't insist on first a conviction and then the argument of the case. So there are many other ways to put pressure on the government. There are many other ways to put it on the mat. Uh, let me remind both the representatives of the Congress and the BJP. Uh, in the past also, when you have had serious allegations against ministers, sections of the opposition, including ourselves, we have boycotted the participation of those against whom there were allegations. But we have also forced the government to explain its stand. And that is what must happen before you can, you know, have uh, any sort of conviction or resignation. Right, or the government like must explain its stand. Mr. Nalin Kohli, is the government ready, is the BJP ready for a free and full discussion on the Lalit Modi issue, on the Vyapam issue? Of course, we are ready for any discussion. I mean, I don't know how you missed it, that uh, we are not ready for any discussion. Even if you want to discuss states' issues, then we are happy to include all the states that would need to be discussed, which would include Goa, even Kerala, even uh, Himachal Pradesh and perhaps even Assam. So these are all states that would be added. It can't be a one-way street. If states have to, if it has to be a breakup precedent, it would be in totality. So it can't be just applicable only on what the Congress party would look. So are you but ready however, to have a full day, discussion on hope. the Lalit Modi issue in parliament? No, anything can be discussed. We are not running away from any discussion. The, uh, whether it's finance minister, Mr. Jaitley, whether it's Mr. Venkaya and I do, everyone is on record saying that we are willing to discuss anything. The problem is those who are raising the demand for discussions are running away from discussions themselves. Right. Uh, you know, Mr. Gaurav Gogoi, you know, the feeling is arising that you have only 44 MPs in the Lok Sabha, but Rajya Sabha is where you have the numbers. So you're going to use the numbers in the Rajya Sabha to block the Modi government whichever way you can. You're not going to let any kind of pa uh, legislation pass. You're going to not let any kind of discussion happen. You're just using your strength in the Rajya Sabha to block the government and to block the government or in any which way. Is that a fact also? Will a, will a discussion lead to any conclusion? We want a concrete conclusion. And we feel that the government of the day, the Prime Minister who has taken this moral responsibility of cleaning, cleansing corruption and has done nothing on black money, returning 15 lakhs, and now against tainted ministers and central ministers, we want them to reach a concrete conclusion. But the fact is, now, you're are, stopping already... the citizens of India, you're stopping the citizens of India from listening to Ms. Sushma Swaraj, from actually listening to what she might have to say on the issue of Lalit Modi by insisting and that first she resign. And point of view too. Otherwise, we won't speak. Uh, we won't let her speak. But let me get in, uh, Jai Panda. Jai Panda, now, you know, beyond the politics, there are these very important bills that are pending. There's a goods and services bill. Uh, uh, there, 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 there are very important bills pending, these goods and services tax bill which is there. Now the GST bill uh, has to be implemented by April 2016. There's the land acquisition bill which has gone through four ordinances. So is there this pattern that politics is taking over the national interest? Well, it's, uh, that is true. It is unfortunately affecting national interest. But again, this is not a new thing. My, my worry is that we should not fall into the same trap that had happened over the past several years when bills used to be passed in the DIN. Now, if you remember, uh, we created many bad laws because of uh, passing bills without any discussion whatsoever. You've heard about the huge controversy about Section 66A of the Information Technology Act, which, uh, which comes down very hard against uh, freedom of speech, which finally the Supreme Court overruled uh, some weeks right. ago. And that was a bill that had passed in the DIN. So I, that's my real worry. But do you yes, believe on the GST right. bill? GST do you something? believe on the GST bill and the land acquisition bill that these two bills particularly need to be debated? 
these two bills, bills are the two most important bills before parliament but let us see them differently because land acquisition bill is far more contentious and there has been some recent discussion that perhaps with some amendments to the existing bill it can be left to the states to decide on their own land acquisition law. Uh, that is an avenue that needs to be discussed and explored further. But as far as GST is concerned, both these parties, BJP and Congress, when they have been in government, have supported it. And there is a, almost a near consensus, but th there is something elusive. There is a little bit of gap. Uh, uh, now, uh, it depends to be seen whether uh, everybody can come together and close that gap and make the... Uh, bill pass in the Rajya Sabha Right, there not, is that 1% uh, levy, there pass, are those, uh, those uh, omissions in the particular list of items, those need to be debated. But as you rightly point out, these are important matters that need to be debated. The GST bill, extremely important, it's been called the most important legislation in independent India. Land acquisition bill, very important, they have to be debated. Will they be debated in this kind of stormy monsoon session? We're going to continue our discussion after the break. Welcome back to Capital View. Is the monsoon session of Parliament going to be a complete washout? Adjournments and no work. Nalan Kohli, we were talking in the earlier section about the GST bill, about the land acquisition bill. Now, the GST bill, there are some very serious concerns that the opposition has. There is that 1% levy. There are the various omissions from that list of those items that can have GST. Now, let's not go into the details, but is the government ready for give and take on the GST or is it going to be, no, this is our bill, this has to go the way we want it to be. Are you ready to meet the opposition halfway in its demands over certain amendments that it wants to the GST bill? Well, I think at the end of the day, it's up to the wisdom of parliament to decide what, in what manner an act is finally to take shape. And that's where all the changes happen. It's not a give and take in that sense. Yes, it is a, a meeting of ground or where everyone says, yes, we are willing to call this our bill rather than your bill or my bill. And I don't know how this impression is going that the government is not willing on that. Whether it's the land bill and on which everyone has said, if you have suggestions, please bring it on. And that's exactly the point that Jay is making. When you discuss and debate it out, certainly amendments, changes, all of these can happen. But if you're just going to block it and stall it, then the Congress will have to reflect whether after claiming to be in government for 55 years, being in government in 55 years and trying to claim credit for everything, which I say includes the omissions and commissions also, then at that time they'll have to think that would they like to now Mr. be seen Gaurav as one that doesn't want development. Mr. Gaurav Gogoi, are you sacrificing economic benefit for political benefit, for short-term political benefit? Or even the development. fact is that the GST is an extremely important piece of legislation. It's your bill. It's Mr. Chidambaram's bill. So why not cooperate with the government, work with the government and try and get the bill passed, the land acquisition bill. This is your own uh, uh, bill as well. This is an amendment to, to, to of course, your bill. But uh, your chief ministers, many state chief ministers, many Congress chief ministers have had problems with your bill. They've said that the land is locked. We can't get access to land because of the 2013 bill. We need this new bill. Your own chief ministers want this bill. The GST is your bill. Why not cooperate with the government and get these bills passed? All right, Sagarika, two, two points. First of all, this narrative that the opposition party is being disruptive is completely wrong. I'd already, earlier, I had already pointed out that the previous session in the Lok Sabha was one of the most productive Lok Sabha sessions. Close to 242 hours of discussion, a record number of bills no, got passed. No, please respond to my question surely, on Land surely, Acquisition Act and GST surely bill. That, surely that happened with the collaboration of and consensus of the ruling and opposition. Secondly, now the government has to take charge and take responsibility that they set the parliamentary agenda. They set the agenda for the government. It is on their responsibility to pass key legislative bills. Right? So it is the, they have to take responsibility. But Mr. Gaurav Gogoi, now coming to, coming Mr. to the Gaurav specific Gogoi, point. If the GST Sagarika, bill is passed, experts coming to have the specific said point of GST it will make a difference of 1% to our entire GDP. Surely, it's a uh, monumental Sagarika, importance. Surely, having introduced the bill in the earlier in the uh, uh, earlier government, the Congress Party is well aware of the advantages of the GST bill. But at the same time, since it is such a complicated bill, it requires constitutional amendment. Even after this bill, I believe there are two or three more amendments which are required. Surely, when we pass a bill of this magnitude and of this importance, we reserve the right to go into detail and make sure that we pass a near perfect bill. When you're in Opposition, you will oppose the GST bill as the BJP did. Now in government, they're pushing the BJP bill. Uh, they're pushing and the GST same bill. For the land when they're in uh, 
opposition they cooperated on the 2013 land acquisition bill now they brought a new bill so it depends on where you're placed either in the treasury benches or opposition or which determines your attitudes to particular bills well it's uh, i think it's unfair to say that it's the government's responsibility to pass uh, these bills when uh, the opposition or some sections of the opposition are disrupting the house uh, because I think uh, the irony is this, that uh, both uh, in the last year or so and as well as in the several years before that, whoever was in government, they have advocated the GST bill and it has broad support. Although there are some uh, final gaps that need to be uh, made up, but um, you know, I don't think it's possible that we should always try to have a perfect bill. It will never happen that way. Uh, and uh, in, in terms of... Uh, somebody in the opposition agreeing to a bill and then uh, wanting to change it after 13 months. The irony again is that uh, uh, state governments run by Congress, state government run by BJP, they all have, even state governments run by regional parties, they all have problems with the land bill. So uh, it's, it's disingenuous to say that. And the reality is that uh, we, we desperately need some important legislation to pass. It doesn't have to we all pass in this session. But and at least urgently, some. we desperately, urgently need these two bills. What does this say for the future of coherent legislation in our country? Let's go from GST. Is it in the same format as it was earlier or has there been a more give to the states? Are states not entitled to have a viewpoint because after all it impacts their revenue? And that's exactly what has been this. And as Mr. Jaitley, as finance minister, pointed out a few months ago, that if we can't get a 100% bill, then we might as well get a 90 or a 95% on which everyone's on board. So I don't agree with that, sir, that, you know, we were first opposing. This bill has changed, moved on. It's becoming more and more encompassing, including people to have stakes. Let's go to the land bill. Whether or not did the Congress chief ministers not uh, oppose the old format or in the old format that the bill was there. After that, when was land ever acquired under it? It was unworkable. Now, therefore, at the end of the day, whether we want development, we need land. Development chance. can't take place in somebody's You haven't head. given this land bill a it, chance. Well, it was passed. No, I disagree. It was under the UPA passed. It was an act. What happened under it? Why did the chief ministers choose to therefore keep aside two and a half times instead of four times? Why were 13 acts excluded, which are now included in it? Even Mr. Anand Sharma on the floor of the house had written about it as, com I'm sorry, as Commerce Minister had brought it. It's unworkable in its current form. Now, this battle within the Congress party brought out a bill that was not workable. It's for uh, the government of India, responsible for Indians, to come out with something that works for everybody. The bills are being made more workable. Uh, Mr. Gaurav Gogoi, do you really believe that stalling parliament in this way will enhance the morale of your cadres after your Lok Sabha defeat? Is this Mr. Rahul Gandhi's thinking? Stall parliament, that'll get the cadres galvanized, that'll get the Congress party galvanized. Is this Rahul Gandhi's strategy? As opposition, under the leadership of both our Congress president and vice president, we are clear, we are going to be an opposition that is not going to be silent or submissive. We are going to be the opposition that puts the ruling government on the mat and asks them to stand so by all the promises. So is this a strategy by Mr. Rahul Gandhi to galvanize your cadres? Is that the basic point here? The, uh, the Congress party's leadership is familiar to you as well, Sagarika. We we work under the leadership of both the president and the vice president. And both of them have agreed that we will be an opposition that stands for the majority of this people people who are opposed to the Land Acquisition Act, people who want the guilty behind Vyapam, Modi Gate to be punished, people who want okay. the, uh, the, uh, the minister behind the contaminated chikki to be punished. Right. The Congress will only remind the BJP of what electoral promises they have made and will okay, so force you will them continue to stand to, by the promises. Uh, to uh, stall parliament until the resignations happen. Jeff, Anna, let me give you the last the word. If they, if they decide to, to take action, afresh. if they decide to take action, if they decide to stand by their promises, we, there will okay. be no reason to stall or disrupt. Legislative business will they continue. Have to it is only stand by their promises, and then you will BJP you will allow parliament to function. But Jeff, Anna, let me just get you in as a as a uh, concluding remark. Is there a need to look afresh at parliamentary practice to see how this? recurring cycle of adjournments can be broken. Yes, and I think uh, uh, that is a role that can uh, naturally be assigned to the opposition. And let me tell you what I mean. We have discussed on this show about how both these parties have behaved differently, irresponsibly when they were in opposition and more responsibly when they are in government. And this Tutu Meme, you did this, so I'm doing this, is hurting the nation. 
And I think both these parties need to realize that today there is a much larger group of Indians, the middle class which is growing and even people all over the country are watching this and are not appreciating this. A time has come when somebody has to say that enough is enough irrespective of what you did when you were in opposition, we will be a more responsible opposition. Now clearly if we want a productive discussion, the BJP will have to take ownership. They cannot pass the buck to the opposition. The BJP will have to take leadership and not run away from its promises of removing corruption. Okay, Mr. Nalan Kohli, is this in some ways a Sonia versus Narendra Modi personality clash? I don't think it would be down to a personal thing. Every party has a right to do it. In any case, we hear more the young vice president of the Congress party, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, enunciating. Even before parliament started, he was on record to say we won't allow parliament to function unless ABC happens. Right. So you're saying that resignations cannot be the precondition to any kind of discussion so in resignations parliament. Resignations don't arise. The question does not the arise. The question does not yeah, arise. Already one step ahead. The question does not arise. It's shit. incomparable. They're not willing to Absolutely even introspect. Absolutely not. The They're Congress can ask for the moon. If the any Congress of their can ask for the moon, are whether guilty. they are going to get the moon or not, it's not going to happen have by died demanding it. Okay. In Madhya Pradesh. We're going to have to unfortunately leave it there. Mr. Nalan Kohli is saying no precondition of resignation before discussion. Mr. Gaurav Goga is saying unless there are resignations, no business will Please be allowed to take place in Parliament. Parliament will be stalled. Mr. B.J. Panda says extremely important legislations are pending. Short-term politics has overtaken the national interest and economic benefit. We're going to have to leave it there on Capital View. Thank you so much to all my panelists for joining me and thank you for watching. Join us again next week. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.